it's all been said and celebrated, there's a more ancient and quieter conversation that's ongoing silently, heart to heart. Mm. If we call it love or transmission or communion, mm. always happening, everywhere present. Mm. And how beautiful that this, that we are, this listening, this stillness, is getting keener now. The listening is more effortless as the one field, even though it's flaring up everywhere, is also resting more. So if there is a great pleasure, other than enjoying and celebrating and creativity and curiosity, it's in remembering which is kinesthetic and somatic of our elemental naturalness, ourselves as stillness and functioning as that. Since already you are substratum and all-pervading, warmed up to a marvelous 98.6, it has a wonderful effect on the field wherever you are or wherever your awareness is drawn or invoked. So part of the unfoldment is in functioning as a sage within and without. And it's not in the realm of doing, luckily. Then there would be pressure. (laughs) It's in the realm of being. Yeah, just an artfully responding from moment to moment. And it does not mean there won't be any bumbling because we're in these marvelous human bodies that amplify and explore and celebrate all the opposites as well. So bumbling and graceful, aware and sometimes clueless, all pervading and also locatable, which is Good for our friends. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, they're there. Yeah, so we don't have to get this right. There's no pressure. Grace, just as grace wove everything, it also lessens the tension by unweaving. The resolution is quite surprisingly in stillness. Stillness resolves dissolves and solves everything. So we're functioning as stillness. And even if doubt has doubts, what to do, that's its nature. We can also invite it to see its true nature. So long-winded, hello, what's new? Complaints, reports, (laughs) everything's welcome here. Were you allowed to ask you a question? Sure. You know, I would love to hear um, more about you as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, your a brief journey, maybe for a few minutes, from childhood up to present time, and, mm-hmm. and how you got to be this peaceful, <laughs> loving woman that you are. That's very kind. Well, you know, we're all the same, even though we're all unique. So it's pretty much a generic journey. So started off as just pure joy and curiosity as a little one and noticing stress in the elders, which was curious because I didn't understand why. And then as you grow older, the apparent pressure and the role play and the conditioning starts to arise to defend and all of a sudden, instead of just the relaxed, open field of dancing joy, there's this like, and then there was a great quest to fix that. 
And I thought it was a personal um, something I did. And then you realize, no, it's, it's just tension weaving itself into protection and pressure trying to push the embodiment and get it to be productive. And so that was a great blessing to realize the impersonal nature of contraction and conditioning and everything. And that was only seen after the shift, before I was still in an adversarial didn't work because and I did so much spiritual practice I said to a friend I've released enough and meditated enough for a small village where is this freedom this because it's a promise it's a beautiful promise of freedom and um, so then there I resorted to the last resort which is prayer and uh, there's a woman pastor, she says, there's only two prayers. One is help, and the other one's thank you. So this one was the help prayer. And it, it actually was answered within a week. And it was a team of experts, Ramana, Robert Adams, I mean, the whole gang. And it was nice because there was just a shift back into what was remembered and lived as a little one, but now fully informed. And it takes a form to be fully informed. You see, so it was a beautiful circle. And one has, at least I had this idea that it was kind of like, okay, once you realize your true nature, then you're cooked, certified in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> but how remarkable. It's an ongoing unfoldment and noticing. So I was very, very pleased that it's not cut and dried. You know, there is no awake asleep. There's just this ongoing noticing of what is. What is is infinite. Therefore, it requires millions of sages to explore. Yeah, so that's my cliff notes. <laughs> it's everybody's journey. And for most of us, it, it's not um, maybe even called a spiritual journey, but a looking for relief or more relaxation or more felt sense of space or oneness or union or... So it doesn't matter how you come home. Many athletes have uncontained their field just through rigorous movement. Yeah, so we don't know. And you, you, you can't mess it up because it's consciousness is pleasure to return. And it seems lighter each generation, clarifies the field for the next. Hmm. So no questions are needed. Feel free to share your view. Yeah, we have the lady in the back. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm really interested in what you just said about the contractions being um, impersonal. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I have similar experience of the contractions being impersonal, mm -hmm. but also in a sense transpersonal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you might have to say about that because I find that sometimes I'm in an environment and like there's a field of fear mm -hmm. or tension and I notice like, it'll just go straight through my body and I'm in the same state. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just curious as to how mm. you would deal with that or if you have anything to say. Mm. Well, if everything is consciousness, everything is intelligent, everything is also on its way home, it sought you out 
probably because you have enough space within and a kind heart. So if you treat it the way you would, just how you would be with a stranger on the street who was crying or stressed or lost or not knowing where to go, yeah? Lao Tzu said to be like a kind-hearted grandparent inside. And that pretty much, that's what liberates the body-mind of what I call the old-fashioned services. Because wisdom shows true nature. It shows us, oh, we are not this, we are not that. That's the wisdom pointings. But kindness, it liberates the body-mind. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting it in choicelessly. (laughs) Sometimes you always go, oh, couldn't that sage sit with that? (laughs) Why me? Oh. Yeah, and we have the mic over here. Here, thanks, Tony. Hey. Hi. <laughs> um, last week I was in Joshua National Park, mm. and when I come upon a big rock, you know, I like to put my forehead against it, Beautiful. and just to see what wisdom is there, mm-hmm. and. And I feel kind of silly, and people I'm with think it's quite silly. Yeah. But when I did it this last time, I just felt a vibration. I didn't get like a dialogue, just a slow vibration. Did I make that up? Oh, or? no, your resonance is, is the boss. And that was, there was full resonance with that slow, I would wonder if it was soothing vibration. Yeah, I could have stayed there a long time. Yeah. And then everybody in the group ran up and put their foot, and they didn't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was your moment. <laughs> or, or not. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, uh, and another question. You know, with the fires, I just feel like the, the Bay Area of any place in the United States has the, in my biased opinion, the highest vibratory consciousness Mm. and to have the fires happen I don't get it what why I I have this you know why why here you know that's a terrible question but it's there inside me well each one of us will have a very unique inquiry about it when I was growing up in San Francisco we had wonderful rainy seasons And as kids, there was no moving against it. There was like, ah, rubber boots, splashing, puddles. You know, there was a big joy. So I noticed there is a slight aversion to rain in now. I mean, there's a little being spoiled by sunshine all the time. Like sometimes I will walk into a cafe or a store and somebody will be looking at their phone, oh, no, there's rain tomorrow. And I'm going, excuse me, hello. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know. Each one of us will get a clue. This is why we gather together, because then we can get our clues. But that was when I could see that there is a, there is a, a preference for sun and a moving against rain. You know, so that's all I could notice. It's actually very simple. Yesterday we had a woman's circle, and um, it was so obvious the solution was rain. You know, the, the mind in its glorious, faceted brilliance has lots of information about this and that and this and that, but in the moment, the simple medicine was rain, please. So I don't know. As simple as that. Without needing to complicate it into yeah. another realm of why and yeah. why us, you know. That kind and of thing. we also do, I call it interpretive services, does like to wonder. Uh, and then it adds spiritual beliefs. And meanwhile, we don't know. Yeah. We do know that. 
We need rain. That's what we rain. know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little simple. It's very restful. <laughs> there we are. So to uh, follow up on that, I'm, I'm a refugee. I, uh, oh. I can't come back to my home tonight Kay. because of the evacuation. Where is your home? Occidental. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And so we're going to stay one more night here at this hotel, and hopefully things might shift. Yeah. But to follow oh. up on, well, yeah. Yeah. And really honor the sorrow in the heart. I mean, this morning yeah. when I saw some news, I mean, I, I had to sit down and really be with the sorrow on behalf. Yeah, when you say that, some sorrow comes up, and I realize I've been kind of for some reason, not letting myself feel that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this brings up memories. We, we were burnt out four years ago in uh, Lake County on Cobb Mountain. It's a little hard to hear. I'm sorry, we were burnt out four years ago on Cobb Mountain. Ouch. And so we lost everything and reestablished a place here in Occidental. So this brings up some memories from that time. Yes. Yeah, so maybe a little extra. I like putting my hand on the heart, but you would have your own way. Yeah. Because ah, the body amplifies the vibrations of the heart, and the heart is sitting with remembrance and sorrow and yeah. oh no, and please no. Yeah. yeah, so we're just soothing it. The root of freedom and friend in Old English is the same root word. So consciousness always leaves itself clues to be a friend within, allows for that spacious felt sense of freedom to stabilize and root, return. Yeah. So a little extra kindness to yourself. That feels good. Yeah. Anything we can do to uh, encourage the rain spirits to come? Yes, actually. I had a funny moment where I was outside. Um, I don't know if it was before the Napa fires in 2017, but um, I think I was praying upwards to the sky, going, please, rain, please. And stillness started laughing. And I went, what? <laughs> and I said, rain doesn't come from the sky. And I said, well, it sure looks like it. I'm kind of bratty with stillness. <laughs> it's bratty back. <laughs> but anyhow, it said it doesn't, rain doesn't come from the sky. And I said, it sure looks like it. And it said, it's called from the earth. So I, I asked the earth permission, and I went deep. As formlessness, you can travel anywhere, but it's nice to ask permission. So I asked, and I went down to the earth. And what I found was really ancient deities that were desiccated through lack of devotion. Because before we would start our day with honoring the water and the hearth fire and food and shelter, you know. So I noticed these very desiccated deities and I just really honored them because for a lot of elemental reality, which is substratum, devotion and gratitude is their food. Yeah. So humanity used to know that, but we forgot what to do. So just feeding them with devotion and gratitude. And they kind of rose up and kind of merged. And then it rained and rained and rained. Rain. So each one of us is basically invocation. Each one of us is devotion. Each one of us is gratitude. So it's so beautiful when you notice 
something that's in balance, the fact that your awareness is drawn there points to you have some medicine for that imbalance, be it in whatever realm awareness is drawn. And we, we're just absolute beginners, so you just follow kind of your resonance. But I like to go in bowing, just in case. <laughs> yeah. And it responds very beautifully. Everything is intelligent. Everything is consciousness. Well, thank you. I know some underground caves that uh, could use some more attention. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then that fulfills the longing because each one of us, as love and compassion and awareness, will have a, a longing to serve. Because that's the nature, seva, service, bhakti, love, jnana, wisdom. So that's just how it is. And how beautiful to be able to serve from your garden or from having tea in the morning. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and here's, can, over to John. Um, Pamela, in this, in this context, which is timely and, and very important about the weather and, and so on, um, I wondered if you could comment, the understanding that I have you know, from the tradition I came from, which you know, is that there's a direct correlation between stress in the atmosphere caused by multiple stressed people and whether the rains come on time and mm -hmm. the, it's warm on time and cool mm -hmm. on time and so on. And thus the, the logic that as an individual, the most meaningful, purposeful, and beautiful thing an individual could do would be to dissolve their own stress, not contribute to the aggregate. And that um, therefore the value of even group meditations and yes. people collectively and communities, mm -hmm. and that that even extends to other kinds of calamities you know, wars and earthquakes or anything. Yes. There's a direct correlation between what we do, wrongly or, or rightly, yes, and the universe, how nature responds. Exactly. The universe is within. And it, it's very rare that anyone brings um, the noticing that the vibratory rate of suppressed emotions adds to global warming. Say that again. Well, well, the vibratory rate of suppressed frustration and anger and outrage, which is natural at this point, you know, it heats us up, and then transmission is so powerful. So everyone is always transmitting. I used to say I used to effortlessly transmit stress. <laughs> the circle is like, oh. How about we all function as substratum, as spaceless space, cradling everything and bring back balance, yeah. So thank you for speaking that, John. It's so important to notice. And yet we don't want to add any judging, disapproving if the body is having reactivity, because reactivity also wants to be met, yeah. I think that the last point is really important because especially the media, whether it's on the left or the right, if people in these emotional camps kind of blaming each other. And I think that also adds to the negative sort of sort of atmosphere and exasperates exasperates exactly what yeah. their either side is hoping will end. Yeah. Well hopefully this is the last like, remember the way, oh, I should, probably shouldn't use this example, the way you used to make fire in the whole taste, <laughs> rubbing the sticks. Hopefully this is the last gasp of um, separation, wishing to maintain its sovereignty and, you know. Uh, if, if I could just ask one other thing that, that you're just referring to in a way. Peter Russell just gave, I don't know if you heard it, but he just gave a very brilliant talk in the Hayes Ballroom mm. about the, the parallel sort of forces, this increasing pace of technological advancement and the parallel increasing pace 
of all the, the stress that is resulting from that, mm -hmm. like we're not keeping up from it and a lot of the technology put strain on the planet. But then he said then there's another third channel, which is rise in collective consciousness. And I wondered what your, your views on that phenomenon were. I mean, who's going to, do you think, win that race? Well, it's a shoe-in, as they say, because stress is animated by deep relaxation. What could maintain tension other than something deeply, deeply relaxed? So that's why many ancient sages have called it a play because it's consciousness exploring its creation through polarization and thus experience and thus satisfaction with experience and thus then looking for resolution, relief, stillness, coming together, tension, relaxation. And we notice even when our hands come together, the next movement is always down to the rootedness. So I notice within here that things often flare up before they come to rest. So I'm hoping that's happening in the larger body of consciousness that we call the world. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Yes. How's our timelessness? <laughs> okay. And back there? Good to see you, Pamela. Likewise. And um, so I've been working for years with your beautiful invitations of welcome, welcome, and deities in drag, and... Deities in drag. <laughs> I don't know if you still use that one, but I love it. Um, so I have this friend who is with me a lot, which is anxiety. And so anxiety wishes to be heard or spoken. And so, and I know that, you know, anxiety is here and anxiety, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just like... It's just really, it's always here. I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah and like the refrigerator, you know? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Except when the power outage. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which is the great. Blessed <laughs> stillness, but too bad your ice cream is melting. <laughs> but just for a moment, honor anxiety, because it's come to sit with your heart, with this kind-hearted, all-welcoming openness within. For me, I had to start with apologizing, really, because I was trying to either tame or shun, banish, you know. So uh, first, like, please forgive me for not knowing who you were. Yeah. So if we call anxiety a healthy, natural caution, how does the body respond? Because we now have the whole files on anxiety and stress and fear. And, but caution, can you feel there's more balance and room in it? In caution? In caution? Yeah, just healthy, natural caution. I'm not going to roller skate on a wall. We're just playing with... Everything's nameless, but then as soon as there's name and habit and contraction, then there's a moving against it. And just ask it how it would like to live. How would this anxiety, what's its pleasure? Yeah, well, without thinking, it's to be held. Very nice, yeah. Did 
to be to be honored. That's it. And then ask it who it was before it crystallized into that form or function. Ramana's great question, who am I? But now we're asking everything else, who are you? Before habit and history and name and form and function, who are you, dear one? Yeah, I got a uh, an image of a of a child's hand and a mother's hand. Ooh, lovely. That's it. Yeah. And ask it if it could rest as that. And you promise to listen and be practical. You know, my <laughs> my habit of trying to, on some subtle level, tame the anxiety. The anxiety's not yeah. quite so sure, so... No, I, but yeah. in this moment, apologize. I mean, this is elemental power. What could maintain contraction and worried love and vibrating for decades? That's not human. So finally we're going, wow, I'm impressed. Who are you? So we cannot move against the gifts life gave itself. Life gave itself everything to survive and flourish. And then meanwhile, you know, we want to return to this unadorned, open, rooted mountain strength with never a wobble. And meanwhile, some of the survival gifts are sitting in circle around you going, yeah, but we're going to keep wobbling until you show us our true nature. Mm -hmm. So the great sutra is all there is is consciousness. I would like to add all there is is intelligent consciousness. Doesn't matter what service it gives. Same heart, same wise ancient one also on its return. Yeah. What comes up is, I want to flourish. Beautiful, yes. And anxiety wants to flourish. It cannot as anxiety. It's like every note in humanness has its note. Animated by silence animated uniquely to serve, to protect, to love, to guide, you know. So finally you're just smoking the peace pipe with your team. Good job. My (laughs) inner satsang nowadays is just good job. Good job, amazing, good, 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 good. Yeah, it, it just feels really good to share. Beautiful, yeah. We're all the same. You get all the, I used to call them apps, but they're just too glorious to call them that anymore. You get them all. And it's absolutely impersonal. Born of love, to protect love. Until it, it roots and gets really big and realizes, I am that. I am the one that now can bring all my defenders home. So they too can rest, because otherwise it's no fun. No fun if the heart or something within knows its true radiance, and everybody else is going, bummer, remember that word? (laughs) So may all beings be free. That means may all emotional beings be free, may all mental beings be free, may all animal beings be free. Uh, yeah, and flourishing, and there's something about anxiety being being dealt with interiorally with just me, and there's something about sharing anxiety yeah. in the room. 
We're all the and same. Letting, and just letting it flourish yeah. in the space. That, and uh, be seen and welcomed and honored. Thank you, old friend. Yeah. It's like having a really ancient German shepherd. It's like at this point, it's going... I barking had, at phantoms. I had an ancient German shepherd. You who did. That's where I got phantoms. that. Very good. So our timelessness is up, which is absolutely impossible, but bowing to everyone. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and heart and being. Mm -hmm.